Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. Mr. Minority here coming with you to you with yet another HeroScape tier ranking. Again, this will be ranking based on several things meta, kind of like in Big Bell scenario, 400 point scenario, how much I like them, how much this designs fit with the uh, HeroScape you know design philosophy whatever that is you know everyone's gonna have their own opinion not just my opinion you know um speaking of it's the return of the take a shot once every time you hear me say design aesthetic game so we're bringing back the old time game okay so now we got wave seven fields of valor so i really like wave six seven and eight just the, the combinations like i really like them overall i think again um there's in my opinion a few things that could have been better to make them even better but hey you know that's okay there's always uh, <coughs> uh you know different things that we take issue with and uh, speaking of that's a segue to the ishiguru i'm not a fan of these guys um at first I thought they were some other uh, oriental country, but they actually are still Japanese warriors, which is okay, but I kind of like more variants. Um, so they're okay, they're okay uh, to have them. I, that would, I would expect them maybe to be a little bit later down the release schedule maybe, you know, to flesh out more um, same time period, same, uh, or six, yeah, same time period, different, whatever, that's okay. But um, not a huge fan of them. They're not super creative either in terms of their abilities and uh, kind of niche and where they go. They're just kind of like a, a less expensive Massachusetts line. Um, a, a decently amount worse because they have the one less defense and then two less defense potentially with their, uh, <clears throat> if there's a, a valiant army bonus. So um, yeah, and then yeah, so I'm, I'm not a huge fan, not a huge fan. And then the uh, Shigeru, um, this, this is a, I don't know how to pronounce, I'm not even gonna bother. <laughs> um, well, Habakwis or something like that, and the Shigeru Yari, the, the, I, I'm terrible at this. Um, not a fan of them either, and also I really hate how brittle their spears are, so they go down here, I always like it. Um, I don't really talk about this too much, I did kind of with the master set. Um, the, I think it was wave three, starting with wave three, um, maybe wave two, but I think it's wave three where the figures started to be a little bit more solid on their base, um, that sort of thing. <clears throat> with these though, um, we started getting a little bit more ambitious with like long lances and spears, lances to come in a, a, minute, a few minutes. Um, and yeah, it just unless you're storing them pretty well, it just they, they break so easily. They're just so skinny, so thin. So um, kind of a knock against them too. I, I don't normally give a negative for the um, sculpt in terms of uh, structural integrity, but in this case, it's to such an extent that I would say it kind of hinders against it. Um, so yeah, not a big fan of them. Um, again, I think it's a cool idea. I just maybe implement a little too early. That's just my opinion. Um, yeah, and then I, it would be nice if we had some other representation or some other factions that we could go with. But you know, that's okay. You know, that's okay. Um, oh, we're, we're right to him. Okay, well, on to the other side. Cyprian. He has to be S tier. I really like Cyprian. To me, he's and I know I think I kind of mentioned this tangentially before. Um, one of the faces of HeroScape, in my opinion, and kind of like the you know, Sentinel or the Vanguard of Utgar. <clears throat> um, and, you know, here we go with more, uh, kind of, as I said, with uh, Wave 6 with uh, the Dawn of Darkness. Here we go with some more, you know, classic fantasy tropes. We had the ghosts and the ghouls, and, you know, we had the zombies. Now we have some vampires, you know, who, who doesn't love some good vampires? So we got the Cyprian, we got several vampires, a few vampires in this set. And Cyprian stands head and shoulders above them. Um, really good as well figure in terms of um, how good he is. Uh, I again would kind of compare him to Sergeant Drake. Attack is a little on the low side, um, but you know his chilling touch will help kind of you know mitigate that. 
um, but extreme mobility, especially, especially for his size, because most of the, a lot of the guys flying around with that high, you know, movement and flying or whatever, they're, they have a good amount of size to them. It can be seen over the battlefield, but Sarpin's not one of those. So he's flown into many a castle and, uh, you know, done his uh, deathly dealings. So I like Sarpin a lot, really like the sculpt, really like the design. Aesthetic, there you go. No, the design um, of him. No quibbles, no complaints with him. Excellent sculpt. Okay. Ishimu, I'm going to put in the B tier. Um, not a big fan. I also don't really like the creative decision to put a human on Ukar's side. I would put, you know, anyway, whatever. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that decision. Um, but, no, okay. I, I would, anyway, whatever, I'm not going to go down that route particularly. <coughs> but anyway, um, in terms of points, um, you know, obviously he's got the good points. He's, you know, he's only worth 10, you know, it's the least. And uh, typically, you know, if you can't, if you have like a 10 points up to over, then the issue move is very many times considered and put in there. Um, so pretty decent. Uh, not a huge fan of the design. It's okay. Again, we're going back to the ninjas and you got the red ninjas. So it's like, okay, okay, you know. Um, again, not super dis distinguishable, but I do like the red, you know, the dark red. Um, not a whole lot to say about Ishimu. Um, but there you have it. Packs a punch for that point value is Kra. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of her design for a vampire, so I'm going to put her in B tier um in terms of her she has some interesting synergy um with the wretched of bogdan which i will be uh you know, talking about in several minutes here a few minutes um pretty standard vampire vampiric stuff with a life drain and the flying um yeah um i think she could have been done a little bit better. I think she could have had a little bit better design, more, um, but I don't know. We, we need, uh, it would have been nice to be a kind of like a Cyprian counterpart, like a kind of very real, very imposing, maybe a female vampire or something. Um, and the two female vampires we got are not very uh, imposing or regal in particular. Um, you know, a hundred plus points uh, female vampire is what I'm thinking, but hey, um, it's okay. It's okay. Again, if you have you know some of these uh, less uh, interesting ones, and she's more of the, the kind of the keeper of the uh, castle grounds and the castle uh, beasts, so to speak. Um, if you want to think of these as gargoyles, which I'll get to them. So anyway, um, okay overall, not very many points, and it kind of shows you know she's nothing really particularly special in terms of her abilities and her stats. She's mostly again to couple with and partner with. The wretches. Contella. I'm going to put Contella. So this is kind of blasphemous because I really, really like elves. You'll find this out in the next wave. I almost... Okay. Um, yeah, it's either a uh, high C tier or very low B tier. Um, I just think the Contella's design is pretty lazy. Um, it's just, I don't know. Like, she's not worth that much, obviously. And then, you know, she's got the, the points usage and can help combo with elves, especially when you have like eventually Jordans, you know, plus for how many elves you have in your aura, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know. I'll put it here, but you know I'm not doing any favors because I I, I, get, I, I really like elves, um, so this is actually um, a slight against the elves um, to put them in low B tier because it, it just I, I think the design was a, a little on the lazy side, not very recognizable, nothing particularly. But at the same time, I kind of recognize that, and that's why I moved her up to the B tier because look at her points, look at her ability, you know, so much blank space. She's, I guess, supposed to be kind of one of the, you know, the common elf folk or more common elf folk. Um, so uh, now that I think about it, I'm not going to hold it as much against her. But, you know, as the points and um, stats and abilities suggest, you know, nothing that's going to turn here. 
the tide of battle uh, even remotely, but um, just a little bit of extra support if you have the 20 points or so left over. Mark Q, okay, good old Mark Q. Mark Q's one of the funny ones because I deal with uh, Mark Q, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> almost uh, uh, definitely on a weekly basis. Uh, I won't say daily basis. Mark Q, I'm going to put uh, in the high beats here. I like the idea. Um, he's very much of a kind of a warped, demonic looking, vampiric sort of thing. So I kind of like, again, the creativity where it's like it's not just straight, you know trope after trope after trope or uh, just kind of, you know, doing the same thing but repainting it. I'll get to that sometime in the future. <coughs> Not looking at any particular franchise. Anyway, okay, let's uh, get to Hero Escape, which uh, is not known for doing that. <coughs> okay, so Mark Hugh has a one. Obviously, the big thing about him is how it was like, you look at him, you look at his stats, like, why is he worth barely any points? And of course, it's because of his betrayal, his eternal hatred. So it's not that likely uh, that you'll get it, but if you do, obviously it can be pretty bad. Um, <laughs> if you have lava, you just you know jump into the lava. We've had you know a few battles like that, um, and yeah, uh, it, it's one of those things where you know if you don't get it, he's you know he, he's actually really really good um, point value, um, but. Yeah, interesting, interesting sculpt, interesting idea. I, I like it. It had that creativity. This particular set took a few uh, kind of steps outside the, the norm, and this was a, that's a little bit of one. The rest of the bog I'm going to put in the A tier, um, just because, uh, not just because, but I do like their design a decent amount. Now, I'm a big fan of Gargoyles. Yes, I grew up with the 90s <coughs> cartoon. Um, and had some other consumption of gargoyle media along the way besides that, but I really like the gargoyles. These aren't really gargoyles gargoyles, but I kind of like to think of them in the course. Hero Skip has the closest thing to gargoyles, um, and that's why I kind of mentioned with uh, Iskra, maybe the Keeper of the Castle Grounds, because I imagine these vampires living in a castle, because they're probably not living in the bungalow, okay, um, or cabana. So, uh, we have... Uh, the wretches, in terms of how viable they are, they're pretty decent. Um, obviously, they are. They have to be paired with Iskra, I believe. There's no way you can choose them and not. So you have to um, be summoned first. Um, but their poison thing is pretty good. You know, um, obviously there is. We have several kind of iterations of this, like the Death uh, Stalkers, and. Um, I forget the other one on top of my head, but basically, you know, if you roll all dice, then they're destroyed, or you roll all dice, and they can't roll defense, that sort of thing. And this one, if you're attacking the small mediums, then they're usually destroyed. So that's pretty um, useful against especially, you know, some beefy medium heroes, uh, unique heroes that are going to be causing you some problems, like Sergeant Drake Alexander, second edition, but even the first edition. So um, pretty nifty ability. Um, fits well with their kind of persona. Uh, I like the designs as well. Again, I think uh, this is a faction potentially unto itself that you could flesh out with more gargoyles, if, again, if that's what they were going for, or gargoyle-like, gargoyle-esque um, figures with maybe a hero and so on and so forth. So good introduction, I like it. Um, so therefore it goes in the A tier. Sonya, I'm gonna put in the B tier. She's decent. Um, Again, it would be nice if she had a little bit more um, power to her, a little more, you know, punch. But uh, hey, maybe, uh, you know, Cyprian uh, wasn't looking for his equal. No, um, his, his better half. <clears throat> um, she is, uh, you know, pretty decent when paired with him. She's pretty good in terms of her pricing. She's not worth a whole lot and she can really help out with his chilling touch. And sit back. Um, obviously, she has the, the uh, heartbreak, and we, you know, we've seen the memes of uh, you know her having the heartbreak and him not. So <laughs> anyway, um, other than that, she's pretty good. I like this dynamic. This is the I think the first like husband wife, assuming that they are or um, relationship. Let's just put that that whatever they are, fuck buddies or whatever they are in the you know the, the hero escape realm. Um, Fadeland, I think, is the world they come from. The Fadeland realm. Um, where we have this kind of, you know, kind of 
romantic based working relationship for lack of a better term or maybe it's uh not romantic it's just uh you know uh i'm not gonna go down that route okay <laughs> it's a synergy which is uh, has some perhaps other ramifications there we go maybe more personal ramifications so pretty decent overall again i think it would be nice if we had more of a regal more powerful um kind of uh equivalent to uh Cyprian, but pretty good, pretty good. I, I like it a lot for what it is, and uh, therefore she goes in the high B tier. These knights, okay, so I'm a big fan of knights, but, and, and these guys are gonna kind of suffer from, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the low A tier, but it's gonna be kind of the same thing. They're being knocked a bit um, because of their sculpt. Their lances, they just, they're, they sag. I don't know if mine have broke any of my broken yet i don't think so but you know they're easily broken potentially uh the, on the way you store them um they're brittle it, it just i don't know i don't know not, not the best design um so i'm, I'm gonna put this in here i i do like knights i you know um I think having them on horses is pretty cool. I don't like the fact, and this is a bit of a knock against them as well, that you just have the you know the expansion pack. And you just have them. Um, obviously, I know you know due to their size, um, it kind of makes sense. It'd be nice maybe if there were a small squad with them, maybe a small squad of two or three. I don't know if that could fit, but anyway, um, you get the idea. It's kind of the same thing as a similar complaints I had with the zombies, where you just have the one. I always like it when you have multiple. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of just having the one pack and just have, you know kind of one. But at the same time, it makes sense if you're trying to go for, you know, multiples of the same squad, common squad, that sort of thing for uh, competition purposes and maybe even collector's purposes. Um, in terms of how meta they actually are, they are really expensive. Um, and are they worth it? Generally speaking, I would say no, <laughs> especially if you're not against an Ukar army. Um, they, they just, they will die pretty quickly um, because they they'll get the one attack and if they don't kill in that one attack then they're gonna die um they're no like they're no different than any other squad with only three defense and then maybe four depending on who's attacking them and that's part of like warriors have that and they're less than half that price um so yeah again they're all for that attack so they can like hide behind a giant mountain i know this sounds kind of uh you know, brave for a knight, but hide behind them, just hide in the mountain and ambush, and then you know, come out running and charge. Then again, I think they need clear line of sight. So, you know, it, it's they're not the best uh, uh, figures out there, especially for how much they're worth. They're they're not a, a well spent, in my opinion, in one twenty. Um, when you're there's a lot of other things out there that you could uh, do. So, but you know, fundamentally, and I like the, again the designs and the sculpts. So. The Warden. So the Warden, I'm going to actually give some bonus points here. I'm going to put him in the A tier. He's actually not really my favorite design. He's kind of odd. But this one thing that I do like about Hero Escape that is, though, uncommon. And I feel I should bring this up with the Warden because he's kind of one of those where it's like, okay, it's kind of most obvious. Mostly of HeroScape, and this is the way I think of this HeroScape, is mostly kind of very accessible kind of tropes, stereotypes, um, you know, cliches of different, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, historical, that sort of thing. Uh, why, generally speaking, rather widely known, um, you know, uh, aspects of these uh, fiction, if you will, or history and etc. And then, uh, every so once in a while, and I like this, every so once in a while, don't do it that commonly, but every so once in a while, have your own creation. You know, this is what makes it accessible. That's why I never got into Warhammer, Warhammer 40K and those others is because Dungeons and Dragons, I just think they look too weird. You know, you look at them as like, what is that? That's not very tropey, okay? And it's, it's a, I'm more of a, a noob, if you would, although, you know, I've stayed with HeroScape for a while. Um, and, uh, you know, I like things that you can just look at and say, okay, that's a, you know, a World War II soldier, that's a samurai, that's a ninja, that's a dragon, that's an elf, you know, and I've m maybe mentioned it before, but um, that's why I like as the core of the hero skip design aesthetic, something that is, you know, very recognizable when you look at it, but 
they take their own kind of twist, their own kind of designs, and tweak them a little bit here and there, or make them better, or etc., or do whatever they want with them, have their own flavor. That I like. But I encourage them every so once in a while to step out a little bit, and this is one of them. You look at him, the Warden 816, and I know I'm spending half the video on this guy, um, but it really needs to be brought up, I think, in my opinion. And he just doesn't really fit into any mold. Now, unfortunately, not unfortunately, but I guess maybe to an extent, he is a soul board, so that kind of does time in. But if you look on the other side of this card, if I remember correctly, he's the only one from that planet. There's no one else from his planet. I can't remember what the planet is. Um, sorry about that. Um, but everyone else is you know, from maybe a selection of half a dozen to a dozen different planets. He's the only one from that planet. So now you're kind of thinking, okay, is he like, because he's a warden, is he on like a prison world or something? And then your mind starts going. So you look at him and you can't exactly pinpoint what he is in terms of, you know, a, um, a stereotype or whatever. It's like, okay, what is that? And I like that. I like having that every so often. That's one gripe I had about Age of Annihilation. That it was a little bit too um, straying, uh, straight a little bit too far in my opinion from what we I would call, you know, typical tropes. Now, again, everyone's going to be, you know, has their own definition of what a typical trope is. Oh, you know, that's a horror, sci-fi, alien bug, or whatever. It's like, I think they're awesome, but you have to use a lot of adjectives for that, right? You, you can't just say, it's an elf, it's a vampire, it's a zombie, it's a, you know, a gargoyle, that sort of thing. So with this guy, I kind of like that again. Every so often, sprinkled in, have your own creative lore, you know, have the Heroescape team do their thing, and uh, I like it. Now, in terms of how he is, he's an interesting character, as you know, he is unique. Uh, in terms of his stats, they're rather interesting, rather low life, but then higher defense, but he's ranged, but he's also potentially dangerous up close, but then not if you're small, which is interesting. So, and then of course he has, uh, you know, some guard uh, synergy, which, you know, the Zetan guards come to mind first because they're also Soulborg. So, very interesting sculpt uh, and uh, character, this uh, Warden A16, and I like it. So he gets kind of a, the long, bit longer segment and side rant and that sort of thing. But yeah, overall, very strong set. We got a lot of Ukar still. Um, we're keeping that Ukar relationship strong. Not gonna last Royal Alert for the uh, next wave quite as much, but um, yeah, uh, good set overall and uh, yeah, Cyprian is the face. He stands head and shoulders above all with that S tier. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Continuing down the Heroescape line, just got uh, one more set that I will review because I do not have all of Black Moon Siege, which is Wave 9, so just the Wave 8. And after that, I will move into the Large Waves. Yeah, Large, of course, they're small in terms of number of figures, but Large in terms of the size, the figure size. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one.